So we're going to look at another example of Coulomb's law, this time charges on the corners of a polygon. So here's my setup. I give you an equilateral triangle. All the sides have the same length, all the interior angles are congruent, and on each corner I put a red point charge uh, with charge plus Q. And I ask you what is the electric field at the very center of the polygon. That's the little green circle that I've drawn in there. So you might think uh, on first glance that you can just brute force this problem. And you can. You can calculate the electric field due to each point charge separately. And then you can add up the three vectors using superposition. And you can get a final answer uh, just using Coulomb's law. But you might notice that uh, as your polygon gets more complicated, this might not be the best way to do the problem. What if you had 10 sides, 20 sides, 100 sides? It's not very practical to add up every single vector. So we ask, is there an easier way to do problems like this? And the answer is yes, we can exploit symmetry. So what you see here is I've drawn a line straight down the center of that triangle. And I don't know what the electric field is at the very center point. So I'm just going to assume it has some magnitude, we're going to call it E, and it has some direction, and I've drawn that direction in over there, right? So you'll notice here that I'm looking at my triangle straight on. So now let's pretend I rotate my head clockwise, and I look at the triangle in a different way. Well, if I turn my head to the side, I'm seeing exactly the same setup of charges as I was in the first case. So I ought to see exactly the same electric field kind of going off at the same angle, right? And I can do it again. I'm going to rotate my head even more, and uh, I see exactly the same setup of charges. I ought to see exactly the same electric field. Now, at the end of the day, there's only one electric field at the center of the triangle, right? But as we've seen, all three of those vectors uh, are the same, right? They all must be identical because they're all describing the same charge configuration. And so the only way that's possible is if all of them have a magnitude of zero, right? So the electric field at the center of the polygon has a magnitude of zero. So oftentimes in physics it's easier to determine the symmetries in the problem before trying to do the math. And like in this case, sometimes if we exploit symmetry, we don't even have to do any calculations. Uh, so I'd like you to try this out for other polygons. Take squares, octagons, whatever the case may be, and see if you can think about it. Turn your head and envision the shape, uh, envision the symmetries of the shape in different configurations. And see if you get the same answer for bigger polygons and for negative charges instead of positive charges.